Hello world, I'm Benjamin, and this is Source Decoded. Welcome back to another installment of JavaScript is Easy. Now, to this point, when we've experimented with JavaScript, we've done pretty much just one line at a time. And last time we did write a script that had a bunch of lines in sequence, but even that was sequential. It just ran top to the bottom. Now, I know you've been having a ton of fun with this because you've discovered that you can command your computer with the authority of a king. You can make it do complicated math problems, and boy, don't you wish you'd have known that when you were in school learning to do long division. We've learned how to compare values and glue strings together. And are you feeling a sense of power? Oh, the authority that is now in your command. You can conquer lands, nay, worlds. The universe is yours for the taking. Now that's pretty exciting, but hold your horses because it gets even better. What if I told you that you can give your programs the ability to make their own decisions? Well, you can. As long as we're talking about conquering the universe, let's say there are two worlds that are available for you to conquer benevolently. One of these worlds has vast natural reserves of monolithium trimethyloxidine, which, as you know, is an important component in the manufacture of the rocket fuel that you need to get your spaceships from one part of the galaxy to the other. The other world specializes in the manufacture of aglets, those little plastic things at the tips of your shoelaces that keeps them from fraying. With the power of conditionals, you can make a program that, based on what resources are more constrained right now, will tell you if you're going to conquer Omicron Beta, which has the rocket fuel, or Planet Sapatonia, which is where you can get the shoelaces. What would this look like in JavaScript? Well, let's take a look. Here we have a small JavaScript program, and at the top we'll define what our rocket fuel reserves are, 2,000 and how many sets of aglets we have. Next, we'll define some variables that will track which planet we're going to conquer. That's the target of conquest. And another variable that lets us figure out what our resource constraint is. Now, this is the decision-making part. We say, if rocket fuel reserves is less than aglet sets, then our resource constraint is rocket fuel, because we have less rocket fuel. Otherwise, our resource constraint is shoelaces. And then we're going to make another decision. If our resource constraint is rocket fuel, then we'll go and conquer Omicron Beta. Otherwise, we should conquer planet Sabatonia. There you go. This little program will, at your whim, decide which planet will next benefit from your conquering it. When the program completes, the variable target of conquest will contain the name of the planet that you're going to conquer next. Go ahead and take a look at this program and see if you can guess what that value is going to be. So it looks like we're going to Omicron Beta, because we have less rocket fuel than we have sets of aglets, so our constraint will be rocket fuel, and that means we're going to Omicron Beta. Okay, so this isn't very complicated, and I'm sure with just this simple example that I've shown you, you could figure out conditionals, if-else statements, and be up and running in no time at all. And that's nice, but wouldn't you like to know how it actually works? Well, of course you would. That's why you're here, isn't it? Now, to explain the operation of the if statement, we need to define two new nerd words, statement and expression. Now, you'll want to pay close attention to this part because knowing the difference between a statement and an expression makes you way more interesting to talk to at parties. Except it doesn't, apparently. So let's start with statement. A statement is a unit of code that does something. That's kind of a nebulous definition. A lot of times you can think of a statement as a line of code. In a previous video, I talked about how the semicolon delineates one statement from another, and that's why we usually see a semicolon at the end of a line. But statements come in lots of different shapes. The if statement that we saw a second ago is a statement. Loops, which we haven't covered yet, are statements. When you assign a value to a constant or a variable, that's a statement too. Now there's a particular kind of statement that is going to be really important to understanding if statements, and that is the block statement. A block statement is made by wrapping curly braces around a bunch of other statements. What that does is allows that group of statements to be treated as a single statement. 
So now what's an expression? An expression is a statement that's going to resolve down to a value. So two plus two is an expression because two plus two is going to turn into four. If I say false and true, that's an expression too. It will resolve down to false. Now it's interesting to note that expressions are also statements. Two plus two is a statement because it's a unit of code that does something. And values are also expressions and therefore statements. Just the number two is an expression and a statement. Okay, so what does this have to do with the if statement? The if statement comes in two flavors. The first one looks something like this. The word if, some parentheses, and inside the parentheses we have an expression of some kind. After the parentheses, we have a statement. This isn't valid JavaScript. We sometimes call stuff like this pseudocode because it looks kind of like code, but it wouldn't actually run, but we write it in order to illustrate or explain something. Um, but this is an if statement. An if, an expression in parentheses, followed by a statement. This space here is optional, but I like to use it because I think it helps it read better. The second flavor of an if statement is if, expression in parentheses statement just like the first kind then the word else and another statement now when we see this in real life we usually see it broken up a little if expression with the statement indented for readability and then an else and the other statement that is the anatomy, essentially, of an if statement. So why don't we go back to our example that we saw at the beginning and see how it fits inside of this structure. So first off, we have our constants and the variables and everything, but here's the if statement. We've got the word if, and then you see the parentheses right here, and inside the parentheses is an expression. Now, after the parentheses, you remember we have a statement. This whole thing is a statement. Remember I said there was that special kind of statement, the block statement, that had curly braces around it? That's what we're doing here. This is the version of the if statement that has an else in it. So we've got else and one more statement. Now the astute student will notice that in our example here, there is only one statement inside of our block statement. So technically we don't need the curly braces to collect all of those things together. And that's true, but a lot of people recommend that you use the curly braces whether you have more than one statement or not. Because it could happen that sometime in the future you come back to this code, you add a new line, and you think it's going to be executed conditionally or just when the if statement matches but instead it ends up getting run all the time. Now, whenever you see an if statement, I hope you see that format. If the parentheses with an expression inside followed by a statement. And just remember that that statement is usually going to be in the form of a block statement or surrounded by curly braces. Now that expression needs to resolve to a true or a false. If it resolves to true, then the statement that belongs to the if gets executed. If it resolves to false, then the statement that belongs to the else gets executed if you have an else. Now, there's another thing that you'll see pretty often, and that is the else if. Now, in this example, I've got if with the expression, the condition expression, and then a statement here that's just empty this time, and then else followed by an if. Now, when you see this, you might think that else if is special in some way, like there is an else if statement or else if is a, is a keyword or something, but it's not. Remember that the else needs to be followed by a statement and an if statement is a statement. So what we've got here is if condition statement else and then everything after the else is a statement. It just so happens that statement is another if statement. One of the reasons I think this is so interesting is because I didn't know this until I'd been programming for a long time. I thought else if was special, but it's really not. Actually, you can write equivalent code to this by wrapping the if here in parentheses 
and then this other if in more parentheses until you have all of these parentheses. This is technically valid, or you could do some tabs and write it this way. This honestly makes my eyes hurt a little bit, and it's hard to read. You will see it written without all those extra braces like that. Now, because you learned that first off, you don't think that's amazing, but uh, find somebody who's been programming a little longer than you and say, hey, did you know that an else if is not special? Just the if after the else is the statement that can follow the else. Now, the last thing we need to cover talking about if statements and conditionals is what's going on inside that expression, that condition expression. I said before that that expression had to resolve to either a false or a true, a Boolean. That is a little bit of an oversimplification. Remember in a previous video, we talked about how JavaScript wants to be really forgiving and it wants to help you out and it's sometimes trying to guess what you mean. In many other languages, if you give a non-Boolean to an if statement, it will throw a type error and crash saying, this doesn't make any sense. Because really it doesn't make any sense to say, if 17, drive around the block. But in JavaScript, you can put whatever you want in there and it's gonna try really hard to guess what you mean. And as a general rule, when a computer tries to guess what you mean, you can expect some weirdness. JavaScript has some rules about how it converts values into true or false for use in a conditional. And this feature where JavaScript forces an expression in the if statement to be either true or false has led to the rather infamous concept in JavaScript of truthiness and falsiness. Truthy means a value that will be interpreted as true in a conditional. And falsy refers to a value that will be interpreted as false in a conditional. So if you're going to be a good JavaScript programmer, you need to memorize what these rules are. I think probably the easiest thing to do is to just memorize what the falsy values are because anything that isn't falsy is truthy or will be interpreted as true. So the falsy values are null, undefined, the number zero, nan or not a number, and an empty string, and of course, false. And to be painfully pedantic, there's actually a negative and a positive zero, but those both resolve to false, so maybe you don't need to worry about that. The number one is truthy. The number five billion and six is truthy. The string hello world will be truthy. A string that is just a space, but is not empty, is also truthy. And true is truthy. This is an important thing to learn up front because it sometimes traps people and makes them confused. But you watched this video, so you understand it and you will not be confused. Congratulations. Now you understand the if statement. And if you don't, rewind the video and watch it again. If you still don't, leave me a comment and ask me a question about something that I didn't explain very well. That's all for now. You'll see me in the next one. <laughs>